I have finally played the Walking Dead video game. Not that one, the really good one. Now I can go all Woody the Woodpecker on a bunch of spoiler videos that I've been missing out on. <laughs> Telltale Games is a studio that has been developing point-and-click adventure games throughout the past few years, mostly based on licensed properties, very popular licensed properties, and most of them have been movies like Jurassic Park and Back to the Future. Due to the popularity of the show, they decided to take on The Walking Dead. However, what they decided to do is not to adapt the show, but instead adapt Robert Cookman's original comic book. From the artworks to the story narrative to some of the traditional nuances of some of the characters that appeared in the show also appear in the video game. But they're more in the style of how they appeared in the comic book, not so much in the show. And much like Telltale's previous games, this game is also episodic and it spans across five episodes that make up the first season. And it tells the story of a man named Lee Everett who crosses paths with a little girl named Clementine upon the wake of a zombie outbreak. And upon forming new friendships with supporting characters as well as dealing with very intense situations, it is up to them to survive. That is as deep as I can get into the story of season one of The Walking Dead. Not only because I want to withhold spoilers, but also because this game does something that we have seen in other games before, especially Telltale's games. But it's done so well that you just want to hold in the story as much as possible and just let somebody else play it. Because this game, like they say numerous times every time you start a new episode, is tailored to how you play. The story is told through the decisions that you make, whether it be something that you say to a particular character or just a simple action that you choose to do. Not one game experience is going to be the same from two different players. Some of the outcomes might be a little similar, but the combination of the, de the decisions that the player makes between two specific players, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a different experience for both of them. And that's what I absolutely adore about this game is that these decisions matter. These decisions genuinely make you feel like you've made a choice. Every time you make a choice, there's a guarantee that you're going to feel I made the wrong choice. I, I shouldn't have done that. But then you see how that choice affected the situation and sometimes there are good consequences where you're like, okay, I'm glad I did that. But then there are also other uh, not so good consequences that you have to live with because these decisions will then affect the next episode. You know, whatever decision you made, made in episode one, in one way or another, it's going to affect how you play episode two and then episode three and so on. Not only did I love the fact that it was episodic because it kind of felt like just the show as well as the comic. You know, every time you read a new issue, it says, you know, next time on The Walking Dead previously on The Walking Dead, and I love those little inserts, those little bookends at the at the beginning and at the end of each episode, uh, recapping what you did in the last episode and seeing your decisions in that little, you know, previously on The Walking Dead montage, as well as seeing what may or may not happen in the next episode, just makes this experience all the more authentic and, and, co and coherent with the comic as well as the show, but the decisions genuinely mess with your mind because you get and you become so invested with these characters and what they've gone through that when your decision puts a life on the line you genuinely feel it granted every now and then you're given the option to say something or do something that isn't going to necessarily affect the story that much but when the big decisions come they're heavy and all of that is due to some really spectacular writing i love the writing throughout almost all five episodes the, you know, one has more weak points than the other, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about them because that would just take up too much time. But the writing is exceptional throughout. You know, the dialogue, the way these characters behave, it's realistic. Unlike the show, you know, in the show, some of these characters were acting a little bit, you know, like jerks. But they were acting in a way where you don't have to act that way initially upon meeting. One of the complaints that I had with the show is that sometimes when characters meet... Their first intention is to just pull out their guns and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing here? No, what are you doing here? Here, two things are at play. One, it's written better. Some characters, you, you know, it, it's treated in a much more realistic manner where some characters will react aggressively, but then others that you would expect to act a certain way do act that way. And the second reason is because you control the protagonist. So you control what he says and does. So if you want to act aggressively towards this new character that you just met, you can do that or you can t choose the more positive calm route of approaching this character with a, a mild manner and however you react to that character will also decide how that character is going to react to you if you want to speak out your loyalty to a certain character that character will then be more inclined to help you out during tough situations uh, in terms of the story or if you want to go ahead and accuse somebody of doing something wrong and being a bad person then that person will more than likely become your enemy and when all is said and done what i love about the writing is that it stays focused the focus of the game as well as the story of the game is ultimately survival and it manages to keep that theme intact throughout all five episodes whether they change 
the, the setting or the characters that are, uh, that are involved or the, the situations that they're going through. The ultimate goal is survival and the game manages to keep that theme intact throughout all five episodes. And the characters are really good. Some you will like, some you will love, some characters you dislike or maybe even hate, but you're given a proper reason to hate. You're given a proper reason because that's the type of character that he or she was written. It's not like Andrea who is, uh, what from what I hear, I haven't read the comics, but from what I hear she is a really cool character in the comics but ended up being a bit of a, a bit of a hoe in season three of the show. That fortunately does not happen. Here you're given reasons to feel a certain way about these characters, whether it be a character that is either simply just a, a guy that you're ult ultimately you're gonna dislike, to a guy that you're gonna love because he's a really a genuinely cool character, to a guy that's a bit complex because initially you think, oh, okay, this guy's all right, but then he goes through some stuff that makes you feel, man, he, he's acting very dark and. and a bit of a douchebag but then when you put the things that he went through in perspective you go well it kind of makes sense for him to act that way I mean wouldn't you and what helps these characters be more awesome is the fact that they're designed very well like I said they took the artwork from the comics and adapted it into the game meaning you're gonna not gonna expect any sort of photorealism like in the last of us or any other current gen or even next gen next gen titles but here they adapted that cartoony slightly exaggerated style but not over the top kind of way and I, I absolutely love it. I love that it's cartoony, but at the same time, it feels like I'm watching a motion comic of the original Robert Kirkman comic book. And the design from all of these characters, from the ones that were solely created for this game, as well as characters from the comic, I love almost all of them. And to top it all off, the walkers in this game, in my opinion, scarier than they are in the show. Because in the show, you know, they're actors with makeup and a little bit of CG effects here and there. Here, they're given a haunting quality to where their eyes are just nothing but white and they're missing complete portions of their head and uh, I don't know, this is, to me they looked a lot more gruesome than they were in the show. And that played a huge role in how intense this game became later on when making those tough calls. The voice work for all of these characters are great too, especially Dave Fenoy who plays our main character Lee Everett. Uh, in my opinion, I think he's going to have one of the more iconic uh, voices in video gaming in at least this generation. My only complaint about the writing as well as some of the characters will probably be Clementine. The majority of the time, like 80% of the time, she's a very enjoyable character. I love how she goes from a timid girl to not something completely different, but you generally see not only a development in her character, but as well as a development in Lee, Lee's character, as well as their relationship. I love that they start off with a simple, you know, guardian little kid sort of relationship at the beginning and by the end they genuinely care care about each other and they generally have a a, a, a authentic father and daughter relationship here uh, very much like in The Last of Us. My complaint however would be that there are certain moments where I feel like Clementine is a little too cutesy. You know like when you bite into a dessert that is kind of sort of too sweet and you, you chew it and you're like mmm it's a little too sweet. Now there's moments where Clementine's like, Look at the drawing that I drew, Lee. Look, isn't it pretty? And I'm just like, oh, that that's nice, Clementine. There's not a whole lot that I can comment on with the gameplay because after all, this is a simple point and click adventure game. Meaning you move your character around, you choose things that you either want to talk to or interact with, and whatever you interact with, you use in order to be able to advance the story as well as the things that you say to certain characters in case you're ever doing some form of an investigation or you need to progress the, the form of relationship you have with this character. So you have, obviously want to ask him or her uh, a specific thing or if you want to be a totally different person, go, you just you have a total of four options. You're welcome to choose any one of them and whatever you choose will then tailor what kind of relationship you have with that character as well as affect the story in most cases. Not all cases. There's some where you're given, you know, a tree, a, a dialogue tree and whatever you really say, it just gives you some information about that character without actually affecting the story but it helps you as a player develop a bond with this character so when something happens to them should it happen you genuinely feel it and whenever you need to solve like a particular obstacle like you need a certain uh, a certain object to it to be able to go through this area or whatever i love that it's not it's not treated in a form of a puzzle like a video game puzzle it didn't feel video gamey it felt like Things were genuinely laid around after the apocalypse hit, so you obviously need to look for the obvious places that this thing would be. So when you find it, you're like, 
oh, that, that totally makes sense. Now I gotta go over there and use it. The only nitpick that I would have about the gameplay are the moments where you have to do a little bit of shooting, whether it be walkers or hostile enemies. There are certain points where you have to use the gun and you have to aim. And whereas the gameplay itself was not bad, it really wasn't bad, there were moments where I felt like I was playing a Flash game on Nickelodeon.com or DisneyChannel.com. You know those games where all you gotta do is just aim and then click the uh, click the mouse, you know, move the mouse, click, move the mouse, click. It kind of felt like that a little bit. But nothing that tarnishes the gameplay or the game itself at all. And if I had any other nitpicks about the game is that every now and then there were some wanky animations. Like there are certain moments where I see a character do this. And I'm like, okay, it's repeating the same animation. I mean, not over and over like on a loop, but within the same cutscene, I, th I think I see the same animation the, you know, like twice or three times. And I don't know if this has anything to do with me having the digital version rather than the actual physical disc copy, but I had some glitchy menus. I mean, there were moments where I was stuck on the st statistics menu that, that appears at the end of every episode, and it, had, it said right there, hit X to continue. I kept hitting X, I, I couldn't go on. And sometimes it would show the loading screen, but then you would start hearing the audio of whatever cutscene's coming up, and I'm like, hey, Hey, catch up. That, along with some other scenes where, like, for example, Lee would open his mouth, but his voice was just a little delayed. No game is complete without its glitches. Speaking of that statistics menu, I like how they show the statistics of what other people chose in that particular episode. It almost feels like a compatibility chart. Forget eHarmony, The Walking Dead will find your perfect soulmate. In my opinion, The Walking Dead Season 1 has got to be one of the best experiences that I had in a really long time or at least ever since The Last of Us, but it's, you know, pushing The Last of Us aside because I feel like The Last of Us is a really good companion to The Walking Dead because even though both have similar stories, both have similar uh, character and story elements that you know you c can be compared to one another, they both happen to switch in terms of the game di dynamics, whereas The Walking Dead has to do a lot more to, of how you construct the story. The Last of Us is more about how the gameplay is integrated into that story. I feel like The Last of Us and The Walking Dead are just, uh, season one at least, are just perfect companion pieces. So if you're ever in an apocalyptic mood, these are the games to play. I just can't get over the fact of how much of these decisions that I was making mattered, how much they affected the story as well as the character, the, the relationships that I had with these supporting characters and how much, how much it affected me as a player because I'm genuinely going to remember, not only am I going to remember these, um, these relationships that I build with these characters as well as what happened to them as well as what I did as, a, as the protagonist of the story but also because these deci decisions will also transfer on over to when season 2 comes out. So it makes me feel like I'm actually taking part in a story that just feels all too real while at the same time being surreal uh, by adapting again the artwork and the style of the comic book as well as being a very innovative and immersive video game experience. I give The Walking Dead Season 1 a 9.7 out of 10 which is an A+. And yeah, I will be getting 400 days. I will be playing it and I'll review it eventually. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.